coordinating the Scientix uh, STEM school uh, label. Well, first to explain what is this school label. It was initiated as a multi-stakeholder uh, project funded by the Erasmus Plus uh, program in 2017. It was a joint initiative of European Schoolnet and four other stakeholders from Portugal, France, uh, Serbia and uh, Lithuania. Now, as of 2021, all STEM school label activities continue under Scientix with the funding by European Union's Horizon program. Now, what is the aim of a STEM school label? Well, the aim is to guide European schools to improve their STEM activities and strategies and to try and get uh, more children interested in science and uh, STEM related fields. Now, through STEM school label, we have built a big network of schools that are interested in improving their STEM uh, strategies. Now, with the STEM school label, uh, school representatives can evaluate their school using, well, some sort of an online self-assessment tool according to the criteria defining a STEM school. Now, this self-assessment tool, tool identifies, um, well, let's say, areas of uh, development, but it also provides training and resources for schools to improve their STEM activities. Now, how do we define a STEM school? A STEM school is defined as a school with a clear STEM strategy characterized by different key elements and criteria. As you can see here, I mean, it seems like it's a lot, but we're going, going to explain. Now, you can see the seven key elements here that define our STEM school. So we have instruction, professionalization of staff, connections, assessment, school leadership and culture, school infrastructure, and the last curriculum implementation. Now, um, beside of these seven key uh, elements, basically, how did we come up with them? It's not something that we, well, decided right away and said, okay, well, we're gonna have 21 criteria and seven key elements. Actually, uh, these uh, elements are a result of the European STEM schools report. And you can find this report in full on our page. Now, this report was built on a vast literature review and really through a thorough consultation process with four other groups of uh, stakeholders instead. Now, here you can see uh, basically the steps from the beginning until the end. How do we obtain the label? Uh, first, uh, I will explain, uh, we will focus, let's say, on the left side of the slide. So I'm going to explain the steps from one to four. Now, first, of course, uh, schools, in order to access our online self-assessment tool, would need to be registered in the STEM school label portal. Now, after registration, what schools need to do is to upload school practice evidence and case uh, studies, which basically provide uh, proof to their uh, activities. Now, as a second step here, you can see that you also need to obtain a declaration from uh, your head of school. And uh, as uh, three, uh, you can see the step is to submit the self-assessment form. Now I'm going to uh, say a bit, a bit more details about each of these steps. Now, first, as you can see, I've said that uh, the schools would need to submit school practice evidence and uh, case uh, studies. Now, school practice evidence provide uh, proof to the answers in the self-assessment form and to the activities that are related to a specific criteria. Now, these school practice evidence need to be supported by some sort of a file, so teachers can use photos, they can uh, use links to their web pages, any videos they have done, basically to provide proof to the activities they have done. Now, the school practice evidences are crucial for the self-assessment process, while case studies um, are a bit different, uh, case studies are, let's say, short reports on what the school has done during the past and something the school would like to share with others. Now, you can see here uh, also the difference, but the main point I wanted to say is that 
School practice evidence is what is crucial to obtaining the label, while uh, case studies are the description of the activities uh, that uh, schools have done in the past uh, year. Um, and basically, if the schools submit both school practice evidences and case studies, they can obtain more points, bringing them to having a more, uh, let's say, um, higher label. But how do schools prepare? Well, uh, you can see on our portal, we have examples of school practice evidences and case studies. Now, I know right now it seems uh, pretty vague of how does this look like, but basically if a school would like to submit their school practice uh, evidence, uh, they can all access it on our portal and it is in a um, type of, of a form, uh, very easy to, to uh, fill out. And uh, the same goes with uh, case studies. Now on the portal, we have our gallery section where actually um, our schools that have, let's say, the best uh, examples of school practice evidence and case studies are being uh, shown. Um, besides our gallery, uh, there, is also, uh, there are also checklists on our portal that schools uh, can see. Basically, these checklists focus on the seven key elements which define a STEM school. So if your school is not sure about what a STEM key element means, how can we improve it, they can easily find our checklist, go through it, which will then help them advance uh, this uh, key element. Now, as you can see here in this uh, orange box that I have here, it says school practice evidence and case studies need to be submitted at least uh, seven working days before submitting the self-assessment form. But why is this so? Well, every time a school submits school practice evidence and uh, case studies, someone needs to check it. And uh, our language uh, moderators do that. So of course, if you can imagine, we have now over a thousand uh, schools with labels and 3000 schools that are working on obtaining their label. So you can imagine the volume of uh, school practice evidence and case studies uh, that we get. So we definitely need uh, support from our moderators. Um, moving on next, I have mentioned uh, that it is also important to get the declaration from uh, your head of uh, school. Now, this um, declaration uh, is uh, going to be uh, also uh, published soon on our portal. We are trying to come up with an example letter that the schools could easily then just download from our platform, give it to the headmaster to decide. This is just some sort of a way for the headmaster to understand what a STEM school uh, label and um, to, to approve their submission. Now, the third step I have mentioned is to submit the self-assessment form. Now, what is the self-assessment form? Well, this uh, form consists of uh, 21 questions, and uh, these questions correspond to the 21 uh, STEM school label criteria that I have mentioned before. Um, now, the self-assessment form, once a school uh, submits it, it is valid for 12 months. So basically each school, uh, sorry, every year schools can uh, then evaluate uh, their strategies and if they have improved, they can obtain one of our uh, labels again. Now coming back uh, to, to this uh, graphic, I have uh, explained uh, this left side. So following the steps from one to four, but now what happens after obtaining the label? Well, as you can uh, see here, we have three different uh, types of labels. So competent, proficient, and uh, expert. Now, when you submit your self-assessment uh, form, this would be, well, the last uh, step of this process, your school is going to receive a score, which will, and um, you will also immediately be notified if your school obtained the label or not. Uh, besides, uh, your schools are also going to obtain an action plan, which can help your school then uh, improve their STEM strategy and sort of upgrade to, to the next, perhaps a higher label. Now, 
let's think of an example if a school did not receive a label. It's really not uh, nothing to worry about. It's not a big deal because they always get another chance. Now, your school would then, in this case, have the opportunity to obtain the label again in three months. So basically, we give it this uh, period of three months for schools to, again, re-upload their school practice evidence, perhaps make, uh, make some changes and try and, and see how, how well they have done this time. Now, if a school has received a competent label, it really shows that the school is on their way to, to improve their STEM uh, strategy. And uh, every month, uh, our team evaluates uh, competent schools, and we are the ones uh, checking if a competent school perhaps has filled in the rights and can uh, become proficient or even expert. Now, what happens after the label expires? Now, as you can see uh, here on this uh, slide, it says that each label expires in 18 months which we think uh, is uh, a fair amount of time if a school would perhaps like to obtain the higher label. So within these 18 months, schools can work on their strategies, upload more school practice evidence and case studies in, in order to, to improve. Um, now, next, I wanted uh, to explain that uh, actually the reason of uh, why should schools join the STEM school label. Now, as you can see here, um, first, I would say that the STEM school label is actually a network of schools that are working to improve their STEM strategy. So if you would like to join STEM school label, you would be a part of the European network of schools working continuously on their STEM activities. We also offer high visibility for schools that obtain our labels, especially for our expert and proficient labels. Uh, they're always uh, happy happy to, to help uh, each other. And that's what I love about this. Now, it also, this STEM school label also gives the school some sort of a recognition as if they're being uh, not different from their other schools, uh, for example, in the same region, because it really shows that the school is trying to, to improve. And uh, also, if a school obtains uh, the label, uh, they have the possibility to show it in their promotional materials and so on. But um, instead of, uh, well, me just explaining what is the STEM school label and why teachers should join, I would like to show you a video that we actually made with our uh, teachers. Now, during this uh, spring and uh, summer, we have been piloting uh, STEM school label, basically having small scale pilots in uh, six different uh, countries. And uh, these teachers have uh, basically helped find, um, and they have helped their own school to obtain the label and also to find two more schools to mentor and to help them in this uh, in this process. Now, more about these uh, pilots, you can read on our STEM School Label uh, portal, and I can share the link with you a bit later once I finish then. But uh, now let's uh, start with the video. So why should schools join the STEM School Label? Oh, sorry, I'll try. Um, and giving school communities the space to maybe exchange. Okay, I will start the video from the beginning because it seems that the audio was uh, quite low. 
or to share some practical ideas around STEM activities. And yeah. it's definitely a worthwhile initiative to enhance your school's profile as a leader in the promotion of STEM education. I believe that uh, with uh, this label, we contribute to greater visibility of our school. Uh, which uh, in, encourages uh, cooperation with other schools and uh, local community. The main benefit is um, to go to process of self-evaluation, to see how much the school actually does. Because when it's all scattered uh, in different sides and on different, uh, on different platforms and in different documents, it's not so visible how much the school uh, really does so it's like a praise to the school identifying uh, documents collecting documents putting in order the main documents you are going to use for the process i think they somehow contribute help very much visualizing visualizing more clearly the work that the, 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 the whole team of the school is doing in science and technologies the school will be offered the opportunity to reflect on various aspects of their STEM school strategy. And that enable the school both to celebrate and also to plan the way forward. During the process of uh, this STEM school level, uh, we have had uh, an opportunity to reflect about our working way so it's a good way to know how to improve and how to get to the next uh, step joining the STEM school level initiative it's a great opportunity for us um, to analyze uh, what what we do the work we do and also um, to have an outside view also yes you analyze what you do and you have someone outside your school that says that the work you are doing it's a good work, and um, it gives you it, it gives you that that feedback. It's a great way of, for schools to, I suppose, attract prospective students and families who are interested in their children pursuing such activities, also. And it's just it's a way of, I suppose, demonstrating we are putting in this work. Why not have a bit of recognition for it and have it shown on our school website and other activities like that? <music>